Strange Creatures, the story of Walter Rothschild and his museum. Walter, the son of Lady Emma and Lord Nathan Rothschild, was a very unusual boy. He was born in 1868 and grew up on a great estate outside London. Here, he had an entire world to explore, with a house as big as a palace and acres of gardens. There was a greenhouse for growing cacti, another for exotic orchids, and one just to grow flowers for the Queen's birthday. Walter's father was banker to the Queen of England. In fact, all of Walter's relatives were bankers. He was nearly the richest boy in the world, but that's not what made him unusual. Walter was so shy he barely spoke. His parents feared that other children would tease him at school, so they kept him home, where he was tutored by a governess. But Walter spent all of his time collecting bugs, birds, and animals. He didn't need words when he searched for butterflies in the garden. Walter had no friends, but he loved every creature that crawled, slithered, or flew. One evening, his father bellowed, This is not what is expected of a Rothschild. You must learn to behave properly. When father yelled, Walter felt like a snail, small and curled up in its shell. The next day, he overheard his parents arguing. He's half-baked, father snapped. He's just lonely, mother protested. He'll grow out of it. Father stomped back and forth. He'll never be able to take over the family business. He won't amount to a penny. Walter worried that his father was right. His governess took him to Piccadilly to watch a circus parade. For the first time, Walter saw monkeys zebras and camels. He was so excited. His feet hopped, his knees wobbled. The words started swarming in his mind. When he got home, he burst out, mother, father, I'm going to collect animals from all over the world and build a museum. And I'm going to call it my museum. He didn't even stop to take a breath. This time it was father who had nothing to say. Walter was only seven, but he began planning for his museum. He dreamed it would have animal specimens like a natural history museum, but also live animals. The family knew explorers who traveled the world to bring back animals for the London Zoo. Walter announced that he would like to use his allowance to buy a kangaroo. Perhaps it will help him get over his shyness, mother pleaded. Father finally agreed. Soon, there were several kangaroos running free in the state park. Walter cared for them with the help of a gamekeeper. His parents barely noticed when he added a wallaby, and when he dashed by with a flock of kiwis trailing behind him, Walter loved the flightless little birds. But his mother did mind when a giant lizard escaped and ate her prize-winning lilies. Walter, she screamed. When Walter was turned 12, the Natural History Museum opened a magnificent building in London. Walter imagined his own collection, now stored in garden sheds, displayed like this someday in a palace of wonders. He raced home and looked over his beetles, then gathered his courage to give some to Albert Gunther, the head of the zoology department at the museum. Albert immediately became Walter's first true friend and mentor. Walter lived in a time when many of the world's animals were unknown to science. Far off jungles and uncharted islands were still waiting to be explored. He already had an encyclopedia of knowledge in his head about insects, birds, and animals that had been discovered, but he wanted to describe new species from unexplored lands. Albert knew that Walter was an unusual boy, not because of the way he struggled to speak, but because he was brilliant. Walter's father didn't appreciate his son's brilliance. As Walter neared adulthood, father demanded he stop spending all his time with bugs and insisted he start work at the bank. 
Walter reluctantly reported to his new life at the family firm. Achieving his own dreams seemed impossible. But Walter's plans for his museum couldn't be dimmed. Now that he was working, he could afford to fund an expedition to discover animals in unexplored regions. He planned a great voyage and hired explorers to collect birds from newly chartered islands in the South Pacific. Father wouldn't allow him to leave his job, but Walter traveled in his imagination through the southern seas each time he unpacked a crate the explorers sent back. Walter studied the preserved birds carefully. He found tiny differences between specimens that most people would never notice and began describing new species. Some of his finds from the expeditions became the biggest news events in the scientific community. Finally, father agreed to a compromise. Walter would continue working at the bank, but his parents gave him land on the estate to construct a building large enough to house his entire collection. Walter immediately funded more expeditions. Explorers shipped back birds and mammals, reptiles, fish, and insects from the far corners of the globe. Walter had animals no one had seen before. He began writing about his new discoveries and invited scientists to study the animals that now lived on the estate and his specimens. His collection would re revolutionize the world's knowledge. The museum neared completion as he celebrated his 24th birthday. At last, the day arrived. Walter threw open the doors of his collection, showing the enormous variety of the world's beautiful and strange creatures. Crowds of people lined up to see Okapis from the Congo, Capybaras from Colombia, and marabou storks. They gawked at giant cassowaries, spiny anteaters, and even fossils of prehistoric beasts. Walter created the largest zoological collection ever gathered by one man and was respected throughout the world for his contribution to science. With the help of two lifelong assistants, he wrote 1,200 books and scientific papers and named 5,000 new species. Animals that now bear the name Rothschild include butterflies, fish, a millipede, a fly, a lizard, a porcupine, a wallaby, a bird of paradise, and even a giraffe. Walter never did make a good banker. He remained shy his entire life and didn't marry, but he was happy surrounded by the giant tortoises, cassowaries, and other animals that lived on the estate. Eventually, he inherited the title of Lord Rothschild and was known for his generosity to all who visited his museum. But his most generous act was opening his collection to future generations of scientists who forever changed our understanding of the world's diversity of creatures. Strange Creatures, the story of Walter Rothschild and his museum.